podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the co-host are not necessarily those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. What's up, Travis? When you put up the photo of Kane, I said to myself, he's going to do that little robot talky voice thing. I know he is. I know that's what he's going to do. And you did it. And? I don't know. I don't know if I'm happy about this. I don't know if I'm unhappy about this. I just know I was happier when Kane didn't talk at all. <laughs> I agree with that. But I am your host, the warden, Matt Ritter. I am here with my co-host, Sir Cusselot Travis Pointer. What does that mean? This is the Back in It Raw podcast, episode 60. <laughs> And uh, you'll be happy to know that I'm going to have to figure out something else for intros because I was planning on doing a Ric Flair intro and I just, I cannot, no, I can't do it. I can't insult the nature boy like that. Oh, but you can, out of but you can insult up. all the <laughs> other, all the other. <laughs> all I'm saying is that Dusty Rhodes was pretty fucking fantastic. And so was that Kane <laughs> and everyone else knew who it was. The only way you're going to know it's Ric Flair is, is if I yell in the mic really loud and I say things like Space Mountain and Nature Boy. Yeah, see, and no. And styling and profiling, see, jet flying, I, limousine riding, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. I got to mix all that shit into the intro just so you know who the fuck I'm doing. That's that's a lot of work. So I'm going to have to rework my intros now because I'm running out of pictures and voices as bad as they were. Um, How was your week, Travis? Ah, uh, pretty good, pretty good, not bad. Spider Man came out, so you know, I'm playing that. It's been a good week, good weekend. So you got somewhere you'd rather be than here. I take it. I didn't say that. You did. Is it somewhere? I don't. I don't know if they can tell, but I'm pointing to the room behind you over your left shoulder. A living room. Yeah. Where the where the where the you know sixty inch television is. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Travis. It is our predictions week. Hell in a Cell is coming up. I feel like it is a very small pay-per-view. Like, I don't feel like there's really a lot of matches announced. So I'm sure that there's going to be shit that they announce over the next couple days that won't be part of our predictions. But fuck them for not getting their shit together before the Wednesday before the pay-per-view. So uh, let's get into our news and rumors, unless you got anything you want to discuss real quick. The Bears pissed me off. You want to talk about that? I do not want to talk about that. I mean, Khalil Mack worth every penny, but, you know, yeah. 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 So, Renee Young got a permanent spot on the announced team on Raw. She will be replacing Jonathan Coachman permanently, uh, and the coach is cool with it. So, uh, my understanding is he will now host the kickoff show, which means I don't really want to watch the kickoff show anymore. You don't like Coach? I don't like Coach as a host of the kickoff show. What do you he like Coach better. as? I didn't mind him on the commentary team of Raw because he added things to what Michael Cole did, Michael Cole being like the JR. Him being in charge of the show and steering the ship, I'm a little weary about that. Hmm. Has he done it before? I think he used to do it back in the day, like when the pre-show was on Sunday Night Heat. So you think he used to do it. So you really don't remember him doing it. So you don't know if you'll like him doing it or not. No, I know that I know what I like of the coach and not it's not running an entire show. I didn't like him as the lead announcer on Raw when he was the lead announcer on Raw. I you. didn't like him as the GM when he was the GM of Raw or the assistant or whatever the fuck he was. Well, no, he had no business doing that. But on the commentary team, he's good. He was still steering the ship. He's going to be steering the ship. We'll see. Um, <laughs> they're coming out with an oral history of the WWE, and Giggity. this will feature Vince McMahon. Uh, this of is course probably going to be the closest thing. Well, no, so this is probably going to be the closest thing we'll get to an autobiography because Vince said he does not plan on ever doing one, but doing an oral history of the entire uh, WWE and Vince and Stephanie and Shane and everyone being a part of it. That'll be the closest we get to really an autobiography event. So so will there be a compiled list of everyone who has given him oral? 
if there is, I'm scared to see who's on that list because I have a feeling As am I. Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young are both there. Do they pull out their teeth first? Uh, you'd have to ask him. We'd have to find out during the oral history. Uh, they announced the E People's Choice Award nominees. Monday Night Raw was nominated for Best Show. Nia Jax was nominated for their Game Changer Award. And Nikki Bella was nominated for Reality TV Star. Go ahead. Where's Nia Jax? I believe she was out on injury, but I was going to bring that up because, like, she's not one of those, like, jobbers that, like, a fucking Kurt Hawkins or something. Like, she was a main star. Why the fuck is she not on the show? I think she's out with an injury, though. Last but not least, if you have not heard it, and this is not just for Travis, this is for everyone listening, Zelina Vega, a.k.a. Thea Trinidad, was on Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia, her podcast. It's an awesome show. She opens up like she did in the video that I posted on the Smack and Raw Facebook page about her dad passing away in 9-11, but also she talks about her relationship with The Rock, several other superstars, and her role as AJ Lee in the upcoming film, which will be released before WrestleMania or around WrestleMania, fighting with my family about Paige. And it's that part I really enjoy, listening to her relationship with The Rock and how The Rock has kind of talked to her and supported her through her entire career and what uh, he did for her to get her to where she's at now and him putting her in this movie, even though she had no acting experience and all that. It was really cool to listen to and just how much she absolutely loves The Rock and thinks of The Rock as her father uh, or a father figure. It's, it's really cool. And uh, it made me really like Zelina a lot more. It made me respect The Rock more than I already do. So it's worth a listen. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. They also talk about how when she has blonde hair, she looks like a lot like Trish Stratus. Hmm. Which I, I didn't believe, it. and I looked up, and she does. I'm thinking about it like I'm picturing it in my head. Yeah, I can see that. Like a tan Trish Stratus, yeah. Or like Trish Stratus when she was really tan. Not quite, because when when Trish was a little tan, she still had a little bit of an orange tint to her. Eh. Thea really doesn't have that. I mean, like really early on in her career, in like the bikini photo shoots and stuff. Still no. All right. So I promised you that I would format this show to allow us to talk about the first ever Hell in a Cell. I watched it. I took notes. I've also got some interesting Hell in a Cell facts because we are going into the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. So, Travis, what we will do is we will cover Raw and SmackDown. And as we talk about what happened on Raw and SmackDown, we will do predictions for those matches. How's that sound? Aye, aye, Captain. All right, so first up, we uh, we started off Monday Night Raw with McIntyre, Dolph, and Strowman in the ring, bragging um, as the Strowman army surrounds the ring about how they dismantled the shield the week before. Of course, the shield comes down through the crowd. They've got bags with axe handles in them. They pretty much beat the shit out of everyone in the Strowman army. That's what I'm going to refer to those guys because I don't know what else to fucking call them. With the axe handles, uh, while... The generals of the army, Dolph, Drew, and Braun, flee to the ramp. Um, The Shield is told by Baron Corbin backstage if they do not leave the premises, they will all, well, Seth and Roman, because poor Dean doesn't have one, uh, will have to forfeit their titles. I have a question for you, sir. Go ahead. You stated a few weeks ago, I believe... That you know you still like Braun Strowman as long as he still does Braun Strowman shit. Mm-hmm. Haven't really seen him doing Braun Strowman shit, Matt. He squashed Fit Balor last week on Monday Night Raw. He destroyed and threw the shield around last week on Monday Night Raw. No, he didn't. Everybody uh, else threw the shield around. He didn't do that. And Braun whooped uh, Roman's ass this week on Raw in the main event or... I guess technically the main event until he got that Samoan drop through the but stage. But to say, so. Samoan finished him off afterwards. What are you talking about? That's just where they went off air. We don't know what happened. After yeah, whatever. Up. Like I got said. Got up and ran like a little bitch. Like you know. You know what I mean when I say Braun Strowman shit. Don't act like you don't know. Braun Strowman shit is Braun Strowman coming out, being a badass, cutting good promos for the character that he is, and power slamming people. And I'm 
fairly certain we are going to get in our main event, which since we just mentioned what happened at the end of Monday Night Raw because Braun Strowman was hunting Roman Reigns, um, Mick Foley also came out, interrupted Elias, and announced that he will be the special guest referee in the Hell in a Cell match that they are throwing more stipulations and add-ons to than I can imagine. It's a Money in the Bank cash-in Hell in a Cell match for the Universal title with Mick Foley as a special guest referee. Like, what more could they add to this fucking match? Well, I mean, it's a Money in the Bank cash-in, but it's really just a match because it's not like he just, you know, threw it in there at the last minute. So, I mean, you can say that, but okay. But it's a Hell in a Cell match with a guest referee. That's what it is. You know, you're with the money in the bank cash in because if Braun loses this, technically he loses his cash in. He doesn't get to keep the money in the bank and use it again. It's gone. This is how he's cashing it in. Yeah, but that was pretty much how he was going to cash it in anyway. It's right to the dude's face. So what's the difference? Yeah, except he tried to cash it in and Roman had his bitches come down and save him. Uh, Who's going to win that match? Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, Hell in a Cell, Mick Foley, special guest referee. I would have said Braun if he hadn't turned heel, but I'm going to I'm going to say they're going to keep it on Roman for a while. You know, they always say that it's better to have a face chasing a heel for the title. I think they're going to put it on Braun. I also really want them to put it on Braun and you know how I how I vote. Um so I'm going to go with Braun hoping that he walks out probably due to some shenanigans and bullshit, but walks out champion. Question. And uh Will we get a spear through the wall of the of the cell? That I don't know. I kind of hope we get a power slam through the fucking top of the cell. I seriously doubt they will ever go through the top of the cell ever again, sir. Mick Foley's in the match. It is the 20th anniversary of the Hell in a Cell match. I have hopes, Travis. Uh, the rack also went Roman Reigns, just so you know. Um... So we were talked about the shield on their way out. Did you notice them mean mugging like the black cop? There was one black cop. If you want to call them cops, I mean, those uniforms look like shit. But, yeah, they all just stared down the one black guy on their way out, which I thought was kind of fucked up. Uh, it was kind of fucked up, but he was the one that got more in their face than anybody else did. So it was kind of them just saying, like, yeah, we see you. We, you know, but fuck you. So, you know, I get it. It's fucked. It was kind of fucked up, but I get it. Uh, next up, so picking not good enough for Hulu was really hard this week, and this is one of the things that I thought might not be good enough for Hulu, but I had to pick and choose. So uh, did you see the Nikki Bella versus Ruby Riot match? I did. Okay. We had Nikki with Bree. She beat Ruby Riot, who had the Riot squad out there. Uh, my only question is, are Nikki and Bree Bella really on the level nope. of the current women's competitors to be competing? Nope, but they're you know they're known names, so they put them on the sh- they put them on the card, and the current roster can make them look good. That's all. So it's whatever. So it's not just me that like nothing against Nikki and Bree. They're just not quite on the level of a Ruby Riot or a Charlotte or a Becky or a Sasha or a Nia. Yeah, you're in agreement on. Not that they're terrible. They're just not there. Uh, we had Triple H come out and trash talk The Undertaker. I, as much as I love The Undertaker and having The Undertaker on Raw, this whole Triple H shows up and then Shawn Michaels shows up and The Undertaker shows up and then Triple H shows up and now next week we're going to get The Undertaker. Like Something cool better happen next week because otherwise this is just getting kind of fucking stupid. Like, Well, you got to think with that, they're promoting this event. They try to make this event as big as possible. Um, I think those things are more for the Australian audience trying to get them in there to buy tickets and fill up that arena. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's what I'm thinking is what this is all about is making sure they fill that arena. Well, Triple H came out and said that basically the Undertaker's butt hurt because that uh, match he had with Triple H, where Sean was a special guest referee, and that those whole those four WrestleManias in a row were the last bit of greatness The Undertaker really had, which I'm sure you agree with, but I don't. Uh, he also says he'll put The Undertaker down with the last bit of respect that he has for him, and he said that it wasn't personal, but now it is. I don't know what The Undertaker said last week that all of a sudden made it personal, 
because really all the Undertaker did was trash talk Shawn Michaels and say he's going to beat Triple H. I don't know where this got personal. Well, he said he went at Shawn Michaels. You can't go at his butt buddy like that. Yeah. Um. Mm. Mm. So, Dolph and Drew had to defend their tag team titles in a rematch against uh, the B team. Hmm. So the B team will not be getting their tag titles back. Sorry, Travis. Yeah. No. I know. Uh, I was actually so. Dolph and Drew win that match. Dean and Seth show up and attack them after they were told <laughs> that they had to leave the arena or they'd you know be stripped of their titles. Dean and Seth are backstage. They threaten to be arrested by Corbin. There's a guy there who they said has got a warrant for Corbin's arrest for some bullshit. I don't know if you paid close attention, but on his badge, it said Ambrose on his little nameplate. No, I didn't so he's see rel- that. Yeah, he's related to Dean Ambrose, which is why they were having that little discussion after Seth you know, asked him to leave. I was hoping that they were going to strip Seth Rollins of the IC title, make the tag team title match, and then have an IC championship like ladder match or something at Hell in a Cell uh, from this. But no, Seth Rollins is you going to be in You wanted them to have a ladder match at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I just said something. <laughs> Some kind of match because you can't really just pick two guys and be like, all right, you two go in. So you got to do something with multiple guys for the IC title. Do it Armageddon style. Sure. <laughs> Armageddon Hell in a Cell for the IC title. Fuck it. <laughs> Point is, I was hoping Seth was going to get stripped so that him and Dean could focus on the tag team titles. And while they're doing that, we can do something with the Intercontinental title so it's not held up in this feud. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Uh, Travis, who do you have winning the Shield or D&D? Mm, yeah, I'll go with Dolphin Drew on that one. Yeah, I am as well. Uh, the rack is all in on the shield. Um, just they just got the titles. It really doesn't make sense, you know, for them to have them for two weeks and drop them right away. And like I said, if I'm correct about Braun Strowman having Braun Strowman as Universal Champion and Dolphin Drew as the tag team champions, holding virtually all the gold except for the IC title, makes a lot of sense for the feud going forward with the Shield. Uh, oh yeah when he went and when Corbin went and told Dolphin Drew that they had to defend their tag team titles because they asked if he handled it he said something about a Napoleonic law and I, I, I don't know what that was or what he was getting at but I you're asking the wrong was, one man I don't pay attention to the French it was just something interesting that I, I grabbed from that little. he's like there's nothing I could really do because of a Napoleonic law or some shit uh, that they have in wherever they were. They were in, uh, what, New Orleans? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. New Orleans is heavily influenced by French culture, so they, I, I don't know what that would be, but yeah. Uh, next up, we had Alexa and Mickey versus Ronda Rousey and Natalia. Uh, Ronda Rousey and Natalia win. Ronda and Natalia did a heart attack during that match. Didn't look the fast but they did it it was an homage to Natalia's father who recently they did the old away. school heart attack not the one that the heart dynasty did yeah there's two different versions mm-hmm. of the heart attack but yeah they did the old yeah, school no, this, heart attack this was the uh, Brett and Jim version mm-hmm. um, apparently after that match Ronda was hurt but she said that she doesn't care you know, she fights whether she's hurt or not, blah, 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 blah. Well, they're saying she got hurt by Alexa kicking her in the ribs. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that one kick would hurt her more than an entire match did, but okay. Who do you got, Ronda Rousey, Alexa Bliss? Ronda. Yeah, I think everyone's going to have Ronda on that one. I'd be, I'd be fairly surprised to see Ronda lose that match. Uh, they seem to be investing a lot in her, which is great, but also sucks because, like we said, Nia Jax, where the fuck has she been? You know, like, we have all this female talent, and we can't really use any of it because you've only got one storyline going for the women unless it's, like, with their significant others, and that's for the women's championship. 
And if there's no, I mean, Bailey and Sasha weren't on Raw. I think the last two weeks. No Nia Jax. That's because the whole Bailey and Sasha thing, they're kind of waiting and letting that simmer a bit so they can make it happen for Evolution. Because they're going to break up and they're going to have that match at Evolution. I'm telling you. We will see. Did you see uh, the snippet that they played of Bobby Lashley working out in the gym and Leo Rush showing up and Who? trying to motivate? Leo Rush. I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so Leo Rush is an independent wrestler that signed to NXT a while ago. He's currently competing on 205 Live. Um, it They almost kind of made it seem like he was going to be Bobby Lashley's manager, maybe, or he was going to try and be Bobby Lashley's manager. I should be Bobby Lashley's manager. Don't know why. Apparently, this wasn't good enough for Hulu. It wasn't a very long segment. I'm curious as to see where they're going, though, and why they'd have a 205 Live guy show up and get involved in Bobby Lashley's shit. Uh, but he was in trouble a little while ago for tweeting out something that uh, they thought was disrespectful to some of the... I don't remember exactly what it was, so I can't... I'll have to look it up and tell you, but uh, he made some tweet that a bunch of people found very disrespectful towards uh, some of the legendary talent or something like that. And he was in a little bit of hot water for that. So uh, don't know why a 205 Live guy is trying to motivate Bobby Lashley. The only thing I think of is... They're going to try and use him as a manager. Well, sir, this whole thing with Bobby Lashley and what they're doing with him is a travesty. This is a travesty. It continues to be the travesty of the week until they do something meaningful with Bobby Lashley and don't waste this great talent that they have. (laughs) The only greater travesty that happened this week is that Bears game, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, no, we already discussed that. Um, I also find it a uh, a travesty that we've talked about every Raw match for Hell in a Cell already. That's it already? For Monday Night Raw, there are only three. I don't Women's believe title, you. Women's title, titles, universal title. I As of right you. now. I don't believe that's you. It. There's more. Okay. Bobby Lashley, has, Bobby Lashley has a match at, at, at Hell in a Cell, doesn't he? Nope. At least not yet. They might announce Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, but it has not been announced yet. But speaking of Bobby Lashley, speaking of that not being good enough for Hulu, let's get into not good enough for Hulu this week. Uh, did you see the big show do the Connors Cure thing? So I that did. was good enough. That was good enough for Hulu. Look, the cancer babies are good enough for Hulu. Which is good, because if they weren't, that would have been fucked <laughs> Yeah, that would have been fucked up if they cut them from Hulu, but they didn't. All right, so... We know uh, Bobby Lashley, Leo Rush, not good enough for Hulu. AOP with the uh, Rockstar Spud versus the Jobbers. Nope. Not good enough for Hulu. Uh, KO versus Tyler Breeze. No, I have yet to see KO. So I still, like, if you just watch Hulu, you have no idea what the fuck is going on with Kevin Owens. <laughs> Oh, because he just showed back up and attacked. Uh, yeah, at last week, but he just attacked everyone last week. And now he had a match this week. And if you just watch the Hulu version, you didn't see him. You have no idea. What's well, going on. the match kind of ended before it began. Uh, he just beat the shit out of Tyler Breeze and power bombed him on the edge of the apron, as he tends to do. But then he cut a promo saying that. From now on, he's just going to do his job. And as per the arrangement that he made with Baron Corbin, his job is pretty much to do whatever he wants. That he can come out and attack people and brutalize people and hurt people and injure people. And he will suffer no consequences whatsoever. Um, And he's not to be held accountable for his actions. But if you want to hold somebody accountable, hold Bobby Lashley accountable because he hurt Sami Zayn. And that's why he came back. Oh, is that, is that what that comes back to? How long yeah, ago was apparently. that? That was like in June, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was it was a while ago. <laughs> so he's still upset that his best friend is not here. And uh, he's going to hurt people because Bobby Lashley can just go around hurting people and not be held accountable. Well, you know, so he's not he, you know, he, he's got to touch tips with somebody. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, Rude and Gable versus the Ascension. Nope. 
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Bobby Lashley Leo Rush promo, the AOP beating up the jobbers, the Kevin Owens explanation of why he's back and destroying Tyler Breeze, and Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus the Ascension. Not good enough for Hulu. All right, let's roll into SmackDown, which actually has two more matches announced as of right now than Monday Night Raw did. Okay. Yeah, we have five SmackDown matches, three Raw matches so far announced. Proceed. Uh, Jeff Hardy started off. He cut a promo that nobody gave a shit about. He had a match against Shinsuke Nakamura that ended in a DQ because hey, Randy hey, Orton came hey, out. Hey, what if I gave a shit? Did you give a shit? You don't know that. That's this is irrelevant. That is irrelevant. All right. You just assumed that I didn't give a shit about Jeff Hardy's promo. All right. Travis, if he cut a good promo, I would have paid attention. He just like it's like he sat down and wrote in his poetry book and he's like, that sounds great. And then came out and read poetry. No, to everyone. See, here's the thing. You misunderstanding me. I didn't give a shit about his promo. I'm just upset that you didn't ask me if I gave a shit about his promo. You just gave no consideration to Travis's feelings, and that bothers me. How old are you, Travis? Old enough for you to still consider my feelings, all right? No, seriously. What is, what is your exact age right now? I am 31 years old. And how old were you when we met? 10? 9? So, of 21, possibly Nine. 22 years that we have been friends and I have known you, the fact that we have been called uh, interracial twins, essentially, I think it is fair at this point for me to assume when I hear a shitty Jeff Hardy promo to know whether or not Travis likes that promo. Fine. All right. So Randy Orton showed up. He brawled with Jeff Hardy a little bit. I'm still not interested in this feud. I still don't know why it warrants a Hell in a Cell match other than I guess they wanted one more than one. Um, Jeff Hardy ended up getting the upper hand. He hit a swanton. Yay. Who you got? Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy. Right? Like, flip a coin. Like, fuck. Jeff. <laughs> You're going Jeff. I'm going Randy just because even though I don't give a shit about this feud, I like Randy better. Uh, the Rack's also going Jeff because he thinks Jeff Hardy needs to win. Yeah, whatever, dude. Like, just, I don't know. The majority of SmackDown was promos. We had a promo from Miz and Maurice hyping the fact that Maurice is coming back for her first match. And I think WWE posted it was like 2,576 days or some bullshit. Yeah, she's been gone for a while. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte had a promo. Hyping her match for later on and talking shit about Becky. AJ had a promo that nobody gave a shit about. Yeah, sitting in arena did. by himself. He didn't even show up like actually on the live shows. So he was there. He just did the promo. I'm assuming he was at home. No, AJ? Yeah. AJ was sitting in an empty arena. He was sitting on the ring. That's what I said. Like he did the little empty oh. arena promo, but he wasn't on the actual show. So, like, I'm assuming so he you're did. assuming he did it and went home. I yeah. got you. Yeah. I thought you were saying he was cutting the promo from home. Like, Travis, I don't think he has a whole empty arena in yeah. his house. Like, oh, yeah, he he's does. Phenomenal. In his backyard, what? he has a, <laughs> a simulated SmackDown arena. So he just for him to do empty arena promos. Then we got the Samoa Joe promo, where Samoa Joe read AJ's family a lullaby. They made a fucking book, Travis. Like, they actually <laughs> made a book with pictures. I paid attention. The words he was saying were actually written in the fucking book. Like, he wasn't oh, you, just talking. And there you paid like, a lot more attention to it than I did. But, yeah, yeah. On, like, I was, when I saw the book, I was like, okay, did they really? No, they made a book with pictures. And then all the words in his promo were actually in the book. <laughs> and I read them. And I'm like, wow, like, they really did this shit. Like, put that on WWE.com. I might buy that shit. And then when I have a kid, I can read them this lullaby about how shitty of a father AJ Styles is. The only the only book you need to read to your kids ever is Go the Fuck to Sleep. <laughs> have you heard so Samuel did. Jackson read Go the Fuck to Sleep? I have not. Oh, it is great. There is actually yeah, a no, book. It's called actually, Go the Fuck to Sleep. 
and there's like a video of Samuel L. Jackson, Samuel Jackson reading, reading it, that yeah. book, and it is great. I really did enjoy Joe's promo, though. I didn't think I was going to. I'm like, really? He's going to read a lot? Like, this is going to be stupid, but it was better than I thought it was. Who you got, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe? I think I'm going to go with Joe on this one. Wow, we are all in agreement on that. Like, don't get me wrong. AJ Styles is great. I thought he should have dropped the title to Shinsuke at some point in their, like, fucking 50 matches. He's been champion forever. It is time for him to lose that title, and I can't think of a better person to drop the title to than Samoa Joe, especially the work that Joe's done in this feud and in, you know, everything that's going on. Speaking of Shinsuke, does he have a match at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view? No. The IC title and the U.S. title will not be defended. You know why? Because the Intercontinental Champion is competing for the Raw Tag Team titles, and the United States Champion is obscurely stuck in a feud between Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton, which... Warranted a match, and not just a match, a Hell in a Cell match, but not the IC or not the U.S. champion. Does Oscar have a match at the Hell in a Cell pay per view? So the two winners of the Royal Rumble this year are basically just kind of pushed over to the side. The two winners of this year's Royal Rumble not only went on to WrestleMania and both failed to win the title at WrestleMania, but have since been on a downward spiral in their careers Asuka being the undefeated late Asian lady Goldberg as Travis used to refer to her coming out of NXT retiring or leaving NXT as the undefeated NXT women's champion coming into Monday Night Raw being undefeated going on to the Royal Rumble winning the mixed match challenge so she could stay undefeated and keep her streak all to lose to Charlotte and then drop off into obscurity after losing repeatedly to Carmella, who I loved as champion. I absolutely love Carmella as champion. This is not a knock against Carmella. It's just disappointing that all the work that they put into building her in NXT and all the work they put into building her on Monday Night Raw leading up to all of this shit, and now it's, she's Naomi's backup. It's one of those things where you look at it and you realize like the only storylines they have going on for the women outside of what they have with their significant others or whatever is the title. And it's just like, do you not know how to just create storylines that don't have anything to do with titles anymore? Like, do the same shit you do with the men. Personal issues that you have between these two people, build a feud out of it. Like, everything doesn't have to be about a title. I agree. Or introduce tag titles and then give us two more tag, two more titles, four more women to care about. Give four more women some shit to do. I mean, I hear you, but even so, like it just, it doesn't have to be about titles all the time. You know what I mean? Like I agree with you 100%. It doesn't, they should be doing more and they're not, they were with Rhonda up until Rhonda got the title and now it's all about the title. Yeah. It's just, they half ass have done something with Naomi and the Iconics and adding Asuka, but that was really just a weird backstage promo where Asuka was getting interviewed and Naomi showed up and they both liked teriyaki and went to go get dinner together and they're friends now. Like, I'm just let me let me just say I kind of like that promo because it was just what that promo was about is just about the fact that they just they want to be friends but they can't communicate. So it's like they're trying yeah. to build something there. I get that, and I kind of like that, but I see what you're saying, though. No, I didn't think it was a bad promo. It's just it's weird that you have a former SmackDown Women's Champion in Naomi, Royal Rumble winner, longest reigning, undefeated NXT Women's Champion Asuka, and the best thing you can do is stick them in a feud with two women who have not held any championships or done not to knock Peyton Royce and Billy Kay because I do enjoy them but not really done anything significant WWE or NXT wise in their careers so far. And these two have to team up a former SmackDown women's champion and motherfucking Asian lady Goldberg to take out two people who have achieved nothing so far. And you can't even come up with like a real good reason for this. Other than Peyton Royce and Billy K make fun of Naomi. (laughs) Yeah. But what does that have to do with Asuka? Like why the fuck did Asuka come down? Like, yeah, Because her hair kind of glows or matches the color of Naomi's outfit? Like, the fuck? 
All right, we're going to roll on. Um, Rusev Day beat the bar. They're the number one contenders to take on the New Day for the tag team titles. There was some great uh, backstage Kofi Kingston. Big E was mixing pancakes at ringside. I've seen some shit watching wrestling. I've never seen somebody cooking at ringside before. I don't think. Did you did you see on the ride along where Biggie made pancakes in the car during ride along? No. But I've never seen somebody at ringside during a match cooking. Next time you're gonna look up, you're actually gonna have like a griddle out there and <laughs> Somehow, he had actually, a, like a griddle or a hot plate in the car to make his pancakes. <laughs> like flipping pancakes at ringside, it's gonna happen. Uh, so in the car great... on ride along, he actually like like had a griddle. It was like making pancakes for real in the car. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, he was trying to. He failed miserably, but he tried. Nah, okay. No one wanted to eat them. They didn't come out fully cooked. <laughs> um. We also had the great Kofi Kingston as the reporter backstage watching uh, the bar over his shoulder segment. That was fun. Uh, who you got, New Day or Rusev Day? New Day. I'm going to go with Rusev Day just because I really want them to do something. Like I really I really want it. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to win predictions because I'm – I need what Rusev I want. to go ahead and Not get his happen. hands on a single title. He just needs to go against Shinsuke and take that title off of him. Like, that's what needs to happen with him, and they just won't do it, and I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't either. Um, oh, we were talking about earlier, uh, for whatever reason, our truth got another match on motherfucking SmackDown. This time he took on Andrade Cien Almas. He lost this time. Fucking cheating. Because... Because of a distraction that may or may not have been Carmella's fault, but he did come out with Carmella. Let's let, let's let's discuss this for a second because they're very flowy as far as what the rules are, as far as what is allowed and what's not allowed. Because for a while, it was my understanding that once the manager or whatever gets into the ring, it is a disqualification. But then at other points, it's like, okay, it's only if they touch the other competitor, it's a disqualification. I've seen it both ways. I need to know what the fucking rule is. I, she got in the far, fucking ring, Matt. I, As far as I understand it, as long as the ref does not see her make contact with a wrestler or anyone who is not in the match make contact with a wrestler during the match, it is not a DQ. So they can get in the ring? They can get in the ring as long as they don't hit the person. But the ref is then to eject them, not just from the ring, but ringside area. But he didn't do that. He just stood there. Well, he's a stupid ref. We've seen a lot of stupid refs over the years. Some bullshit. Don't know what to tell you, Travis. That's I agree. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I did enjoy Truth and Carmella doing their entrance. Carmella doing the what's up. She went on Twitter and asked if she should be Cardi C or Mella Minaj. <laughs> and then had the gift of her doing the what's up with our truth Speaking of which, I need the WWE to make this happen. I need, a, I need a match, some kind of tag match like they used to do in WCW back in the day. Pair <coughs> these two women up with, you know, established talent, and we get a tag match. I don't care who it is. Let's just say it's like... Cardi B and Sasha Banks versus Nicki Minaj and Carmella. Sure, Carmella. I don't give a fuck. But do like they used to do back in WCW when they somehow found a way to get Dennis Rodman and Carmella in a wrestling match. Same shit. Just do it with the women. Somehow get Nicki Minaj and Cardi B in a match on a WWE card. Make it happen. We've seen Snooki in a match at WrestleMania. I don't think it's a stretch to get Nikki and Cardi in there. I'm just saying, I want it. I need it to happen. 
WWE, Vince, Trip, Steph, make it happen. Uh, right, Travis. Um, oh yeah, Charlotte took on Sonya Deville. Charlotte beat Sonya Deville, and then to add to just the greatness that is Becky Lynch, as Charlotte is posing and celebrating with fans, she is grabbed from behind and attacked. The fans all look shocked. There's a woman with brown hair and glasses who reveals herself to be Becky Lynch. I really like this look on Becky Lynch. I, if she decides to get rid of the orange hair, I say go brunette. Not a bad look. Uh, and then she jumps Charlotte, puts her in the disarm her, and then lets her go and says that she said she'd break Charlotte's arm, but she's not going to do it until hell in a cell. Charlotte or Becky, who are you going with? Becky. Give me that Becky. Yeah, I'm going to roll with you on that one. Though, part of me is like, I should go with Charlotte because I know how WWE likes to do shit, and they're not going to give it to Becky on their first match. They might wait, or they might just tease Evolution. us and act like they're going to do it and then never give it to her. <laughs> so I should probably go with Charlotte, but... Here's the thing. It'll either happen here or it'll happen at Evolution. So it's just like, which one will it be? Do they do it now and have the rematch at Evolution? You know, because Charlotte gets a rematch. Or do they go ahead and, you know, keep it on Charlotte until Evolution? We'll see. Yeah, I see that. Um, I'm hoping for rematch at Evolution, but who knows? Uh, last but not least, our main event of SmackDown, we saw Brie Bella versus Maurice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a match I ever thought I would hear in the women's Evolution Revolution era being announced as the main event of a show. Yeah. Again. Nothing against Brie Bella. I don't think she's on the level of a lot of the other women, but she's not a bad wrestler. Maurice has not wrestled in like six fucking years. This is not the main event that I expected. Well, yeah, exactly. We got to look at how the match went, too. There wasn't a whole lot of wrestling going on. so At all. Yeah. It was uh, Maurice avoiding Brie almost the entire match. Um, then The Miz decided there would be no match that they were going to walk out. Bree jumps out of the ring, runs up the rampway, grabs Maurice, drags her back to the ring, beats the crap out of her. They throw her in the ring, tries to beat the crap out of her some more. The Miz keeps trying to pull Bree off. Daniel Bryan attacks. Um, Our truth versus Andrade should have been the main event. I agree with that. Uh Bree got Maurice in the yes lock. Um, Miz pulled her out. Which pulled caused the disqualification. Yeah. Because the match was technically still going. <laughs> yeah. Once she dragged her back down. Um, everyone brawls. The Bellas come on top. Also, um, there was a little miscommunication there between Bree and Daniel. But uh, Bree did end up punching... The Miz in the face, and then Daniel Bryan clotheslined him outside of the ring, and then we went off air. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you have in this feud, Travis? Bellas. And that's actually what I have on it is the Bellas versus Miz and Misses. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Miz and Misses. Uh, the rack went with the Bellas as well. The only notable thing that I can say about this is that Daniel Bryan is from Seattle. He is a big Seattle Seahawks fan, I believe. And Bree poor dressed Seahawks. in Seattle Seahawks colors poor, for poor her husband Seahawks. to match, you know, the Seattle Seahawks colors. I guess repping, that's like their side of the family thing. Poor, when she's with Nick in black and red. Poor Seahawks. I was going to say, when she's with Nikki, she's in black and red. When she's with her husband, they're in blue and green and white. 
you're not properly addressing the sad state of affairs for the Seattle Seahawks, sir. What is the sad st- uh, Travis, I don't watch football anymore. I watched that Bears game specifically to watch Khalil Mack whoop Aaron Rodgers' ass. Oh, and just wait till he's back in football shape, sir. He'll be able to get him for the entire game. He was, he was holding out for a while, so he wasn't in football shape, so he was really only good for the first half. They played him way too many snaps. But the next time we play the Bears, oh, Aaron Rodgers is going to have a bad night. Anyway, yeah, the Seattle Seahawks, like, traded, you know, their defense was, like, one of the best defenses in the league for years. They traded away almost the entire defense. So, yeah. Only one left right now besides, I think, Bobby Wagner is still there. I think that's it because Earl Thomas is holding out because he doesn't want to play. I actually just saw him at the hotel like a couple weeks ago. Great tipper. Um, Yeah. That's it. Poor Seattle Seahawks. He's a great tipper. He is. He's a great tipper. Um, when he checked in, they didn't want to give him the proper respect because the people working the front desk didn't know who he was. I'm like, I need you all to get this shit together and give him the presidential suite. What are you doing? (laughs) I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say the only football that I watch anymore is, uh, when the Patriots get into the, uh, AFC championship and the Super Bowl, because I love me some Tom Brady. It's because the AFC is garbage, but that's cool. We talked about that five timers club. You know, Brady's a part of that. I believe he was inducted yeah, by. Yeah, when your division is fucking garbage, it's easy to get there. It's easy to get to the Super Bowl, but it's not easy to win it. He's won the Super Bowl five times. Yeah, because his division is garbage. Five times. Um. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Travis, that's it for predictions. Five SmackDown matches, three Monday Night Raw matches, which I guess eight matches is quite a bit. Uh, nothing's been announced for the pre-show yet, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and I also don't know if they announced a 205 Live match because I don't watch 205 Live, but I haven't heard anything. I looked. I saw nothing on the match card. Is TJP the champ? No, TJP's not the champ. Uh, Cedric Alexander's still the champ. Oh, okay. That's acceptable. Black guy. Yeah, I know. That's acceptable. Uh, is TJP a major? A about, is, is TJP playing a major role? I don't think so. He should be. He has good initials. <laughs> Let's talk Hell in a Cell. Um, I, as I was watching the Hell in a Cell match, there were some things that happened that I wanted which, to get a little more. Which Hell in a Cell on. match, Matt? Which one are you referring to? The first ever Hell in a Cell match was Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker. I'm just saying, give it the proper respect. That's all. There were some things I was trying to look into, and I came across some interesting facts. Um, Three men have competed in more than one Hell in a Cell match and are undefeated. Those three men are Roman Reigns, has never been defeated in a Hell in a Cell match, Brock Lesnar, and Kevin Owens. They've all competed in two Hell in a Cell matches. They're all undefeated. Brock Lesnar's two Hell in a Cell matches that he's undefeated in. Actually, no, you know what? Was that... A Hell in a Cell match that he technically lost to The Undertaker? I think he might that, be three and one. Yeah, that's a he hell, that was a Hell in a Cell match. Okay, I don't think that this was updated <laughs> for that time, but he's two and one now. But Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, undefeated in Hell in a Cell matches. From what I read and what I found online, um, it might be a little off. Undertaker has been in the most. He has been in 14, and he's won eight of them. So he's won the most. And he's been in the most. He said he's been in 14 Hell in a Cell matches? Yes. Jesus, tap dancing Christ. Uh, and Foley, Mick Foley, our special guest referee, has never won a Hell in a Cell match. But he's been in like 700 of them. <laughs> Actually, not that many. I know. Triple H, I was going to say, Triple H comes in second with nine, and he's won six of those. Uh, triple. Speaking of Triple H... Triple H has never lost a Hell in a Cell match that he has walked in as champion. Hmm. Interesting. And now on to the first ever Hell in a Cell match featuring Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And Kane. Two things I think a lot of people forget about because Kane made his debut here. 
When Shawn Michaels won this match, he won the number one contendership to go on to Survivor Series 1997 to face Bret Hart. Survivor Series 1997 is... Montreal Screwjob, yeah. That is correct. This win set in motion the events that took place, known famously as the Montreal Screwjob. Also, at on the same day, um, at Bad Blood, where they were supposed to have this match, Brian Pillman was found dead in his hotel room. Uh, he was supposed to have a match against Dude Love. That match was canceled. Damn. I didn't know that. Here's the thing. I was watching this event live. I specifically remember this because this was back when we had satellite. And, yeah, it's over now. I don't think I can still get in trouble for this. And even so, it's not me. But we somehow had it set up. Whoever my parents knew, I'm guessing it was my dad because he knew these type of people. We were getting pay-per-views for free. So... Do the card swap thing, like you get the no. unlock card. I don't, I don't even know if it was all that. I just know that for like almost a year, we were getting pay per views for free, and this is one of the ones I was watching, watching it in the living room. I somehow talked my entire family into watching this with me. So we were all sitting here watching this, and they're asking me all these questions about what's going on, like who's Kane? I'm like, it's the Undertaker's brother, and like I'm like, and you ask, like I don't. I don't have time to explain to you all that's going on right now. I need to watch this. Like, this dude just ripped the door off the fucking cell. I don't have time to explain to you who he is right now. I agree with you on that. Um, they announced the Brian Pillman thing, I believe, on the pre-show, uh, not on the main show. You mean so on, on Sunday Night canceled. Heat? And then they... Uh, went on and replaced the time slot for that match with a DOA versus Los Boricuas. Yeah. Yeah, Los Boricuas match. And a midget wrestling tag team match. I remember that. I remember that. For some reason, I remember seeing that match. I don't remember anything about it, but I remember watching that match. Um, A couple notes. Have you ever watched midget wrestling? I have not. We've talked about this multiple times. You've told me I have to go, but we got to talk about this match so that we can close out the show okay. so we don't go over. Okay. Um, some interesting things from this match was the use of the cameraman and Shawn Michaels assaulting him as a storytelling device for a reason as to why the cage door was open, which allowed Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker to get out of the cage, end up on top of the cage, and then resulted in what would become a not so impressive fall through the table. But at the time it was exactly. now looking back on what we've seen, it's not that impressive yeah. in the scheme of the shit we've seen. Yeah, yeah. Cause he wasn't as high as these other falls have been. Yeah. Nowhere near as high. Um, Kane takes forever to hit the tombstone. Once he gets down there, yeah, he turned around like, <laughs> like, like, what are you I was doing? Like, what are you doing? Just drop the fucking tombstone. Like you don't need to show, <laughs> everyone that you're holding the undertaker and it's the fucking undertaker he took a fucking sweet chin music earlier on in this match and sat the fuck up you probably don't want to give this guy too much time but he hits the tombstone uh also the pyro for kane was really off like his music hit they were halfway down the entrance ramp before the pyro hit behind him well maybe that wasn't a thing yet like the whole sinking the pyro with the music for kane wasn't a thing yet so probably this, not, but this is literally the right, first time right, Kane right showed up on WWE television. So, you know, I also think only three of the four turnbuckles went off. I don't think, uh, the hard camera announcer's desk turnbuckle went off. I don't know. So don't either remember. two or three, but not all four. Um, so that was interesting. What I did notice was Shawn Michaels oversold a lot during this match, especially in the beginning. Well, oh, he did that a lot, period. That was one of his things. Like, he put people over for real. Like, when he was, when he needed to sell for people, he sold for people. That's not what I mean by overselling. I mean, he was overselling not as bad, but almost to the extent of what he did for Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam, where it looked comical. He was doing flips. He was jumping off stuff. He was making it way more dramatic than it needed to be, almost as if to make the wrestler look bad, not good, in my opinion. 
Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the match, absolutely, as they kind of settled into it, not so much. But there was a time where Undertaker took his head and drove it into the th- uh, the co- turnbuckle in the corner, and he, like, jumped on the bottom rope and launched himself backwards off it. And there were a few other times where he just he completely oversold to the point to where it, it looked bad to me. I think you were just overly sensitive to it, but okay, I'll give it to you. And most of the match was The Undertaker destroying Shawn Michaels. He had spots of offense here and there. Stuff well, yeah, the thing chain. is, you think about the story with this match. The whole thing was about The Undertaker finally being able to get his hands on Shawn Michaels with nobody interfering. So they were like, we're going to give you that. Taker's not going to win this match, but we're going to give you that. So he, you Thank know, you. gave him time to beat the shit out of Shawn Michaels for a while. Until, you know, Kane arrives. I get that. And it was a good storytelling. It was just, I enjoy watching The Undertaker destroy people. And it was fun to watch him destroy Shawn Michaels the majority of the match. Like I said, there were spots. We had a super kick. You know, we had, uh, oh, Kane really fucking whipped Hebner into the fucking cage when he walked in. Like, he just tossed him like a rag doll. But, uh, you know, we had the super kick spot. We had some chair spots. We had some offense and brawling from Sean, but it was mostly just watching The Undertaker destroy, beat, and bloody Shawn Michaels' entire match. Of all of the matches that we watched, Travis, I believe it's four now, what was your favorite Hell in a Cell to go back and rewatch? The first is my favorite, man. Like, it's just... I enjoy the I enjoy seeing that one. It's just it's my favorite one. I'm not saying it's like the best match that has ever taken place, but that first ever Hell in a Cell match feels so good to me every time I see it. All right, I also forgot to do this real quick. Uh, who's going over this week? Me. <laughs> um, Who? let me think. Um, this week. I'm going to go with Becky. I was going to say Becky, but I'm like, wait, what happened on Raw? And then I remember nothing. So, yeah, Becky. Who's jobbing out this week? B team. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah. All right, Travis, you got anything else you need to cover or talk about, or can we close this show out? We can close it out, sir. All right, you guys can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash smacking it raw. Also, you can find our live shows on Facebook at facebook.com slash creation magazine. You can find Travis on Twitter and Instagram at Sir Custalot, that is at S I R underscore C U S S A L O T T. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Ritter, that is at M A T T R I D D E R. Also, on our Facebook group, we have tournament going on right now to decide the best rivalries and the rack and uh someone that he's referred to as lenny kravitz are having a war of words in the comments under what they're doing with oscar i found that really entertaining so if you're there go check that out um anything else we need to talk about anything coming up uh, you will not be here for our hell in a cell post show i will so not i will be out. somewhere else occupied but i will not be on the live show this Sunday. I hope you can get along without me. The Rack will be there. I'm working on getting him a co-host. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Talk Herbie into it. I bet you can talk Herbie into it. Well, I think uh, I think John's going to come on. I think he'll be here. I don't think he has to work, so I think uh, I can get those two together and do that. Um, I haven't got an answer back from Herbie yet. But, Herbie, I know you listen, so you're more than welcome to come on, too. Let me know. All right, Travis, if you got nothing else, I am the Warden Matt Ritter for Sir Cussalot Travis Pointer. We are smacking a raw, and we are that damn good. Clear. <laughs>